Dr. Paul W. Ambrose. Specialist Craig S. Amundsen, United States Army. Petty Officer, Third Class, Melissa Rose Barnes, United States Navy. Master Sergeant, Max J. Belke, United States Army Retired. Dr. Yenene Beetru. Petty Officer, Second Class, Chris Romeo Bishundat, United States Navy. Carrie R. Blackburn. Colonel Canfield D. Boone, United States Army. Mary Jane Booth. Donna M. Bowen. Alan P. Boyle. Bernard C. Brown II. Petty Officer, Third Class, Christopher L. Burford, United States Navy. Captain Charles F. Burlingame III, United States Navy Reserve, retired. Petty Officer, Third Class, Daniel M. Caballero, United States Navy. Sergeant First Class, Jose O. Calderon Almedo, United States Army. Suzanne M. Calley. Angeline C. Carter. Sharon A. Carver. William E. Caswell. Sergeant First Class, John J. Chatta, United States Army, retired. Rosa Maria Chapa. David M. Charlevoix. Sarah M. Clark. Julian T. Cooper. Asia S. Cottom. Lieutenant Commander Eric A. Cranford, United States Navy. Ada M. Davis. James D. Debonair. Captain Gerald F. DeCanto, United States Navy. Rodney Dickens. <phone rings> Lieutenant Colonel Jerry D. Dickerson, United States Army. <phone rings> Eddie A. Dillard. <phone rings> Petty Officer First Class Johnny Doctor Jr., United States Navy. <phone rings> Captain Robert E. Dolan Jr., United States Navy. Commander William H. Donovan, United States Navy. <phone rings> Lieutenant Commander Charles A. Draws III, United States Navy, retired. <phone rings> Commander Patrick Dunn, United States Navy. <phone rings> Petty Officer First Class Edward T. Earhart, U.S. Navy. Barbara G. Edwards. <phone rings> Lieutenant Commander Robert R. Elsif, United States Navy Reserve. <phone rings> Charles S. Falkenberg. <phone rings> and his wife, Leslie A. Whittington. <phone rings> and their two children, Dana Falkenberg and Zoe Falkenberg. Petty Officer, Third Class, Jamie L. Fallon, United States Navy. 
J. Joseph Ferguson. Amelia V. Fields. Gerald P. Fisher. Darlene E. Flagg. And her husband, Rear Admiral Wilson F. Flagg, United States Navy Reserve, retired. Petty Officer, Second Class, Matthew M. Flacco, United States Navy. Sandra N. Foster. First Lieutenant Richard P. Gabriel, United States Marine Corps, retired. Captain Lawrence D. Getzfred, United States Navy. Cortez Gee. Brenda C. Gibson. Colonel. Ronald F. Galinsky, United States Army, retired. Ian J. Gray. Diane Hale McKenzie. Stanley R. Hall. Carolyn B. Hellman. Michelle M. Heidenberger. Sheila M. S. Hine. Petty Officer, First Class, Ronald J. Hemingway, United States Navy. Major Wallace Cole Hogan, Jr., United States Army. Staff Sergeant Jimmy I. Hawley, United States Army, retired. Angela M. Houts. Brady K. Howell. Peggy M. Hurt. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen N. Highland, Jr., United States Army. Lieutenant Colonel Robert J. Heimel, United States Air Force, retired. Sergeant Major Lacey B. Ivory, United States Army. Brian C. Jack. Stephen D. Jacoby. Lieutenant Colonel Dennis M. Johnson, United States Army. Judith L. Jones. Ann C. Judge. Brenda Kegler. Chandler R. Keller. Yvonne E. Kennedy. Norma Cruz Khan. Karen Ann Kincaid. Lieutenant Michael S. Lamana, United States Navy. David W. Lechek. Dong Chol Lee. Jennifer Lewis and her husband, Kenneth E. Lewis. Samantha L. Lightborn Allen. Major Stephen V. Long, United States Army. James T. Lynch, Jr. Terrence M. Lynch. Petty Officer, Second Class, Nahaman Lyons IV, United States Navy. Shelley A. Marshall. Teresa M. Martin. Ada L. Mason Acker. Lieutenant Colonel Dean E. Matson, United States Army. Lieutenant General Timothy J. Maud, United States Army. Robert J. Maxwell. Renee A. May. Molly L. McKenzie. Dora Marie Menchaca. Patricia E. Mickley. 
Major Ronald D. Milo, United States Army. Gerard P. Moran, Jr. Odessa V. Morris. Petty Officer First Class, Brian A. Moss, United States Navy. Teddington H. Moy. Lieutenant Commander, Patrick J. Murphy, United States Navy Reserve. Christopher C. Newton. Kang Nock Ken Win. Petty Officer Second Class, Michael A. Noeth, United States Navy. Barbara K. Olson. Ruben S. Ornado. Diana B. Pedro. Lieutenant Jonas M. Panic, United States Navy Reserve. Major Clifford L. Patterson, Jr., United States Army. Robert Penninger. Robert R. Plogger III. And his wife, Sandra F. Plogger. Lieutenant Darren H. Pontell, United States Navy Reserve. Scott Powell. Captain Jack D. Punches, United States Navy, retired. Petty Officer First Class, Joseph J. Pysier, Jr., United States Navy. Lisa J. Raines. Deborah A. Ramser. Rhonda Sue Rasmussen. Petty Officer First Class, Marsha D. Ratchford, United States Navy. Martha M. Reske. Todd H. Rubin. Cecilia E. Lawson Richard. Edward V. Rowenhorst. Judy Rowlett. Sergeant Major Robert E. Russell, United States Army, retired. Chief Warrant Officer William R. Ruth, United States Army Reserve. Charles E. Sabin, Sr. Marjorie C. Salamone. John P. Sammartino. Colonel David M. Scales, United States Army. Commander. Robert A. Schlegel, United States Navy. Janice M. Scott. Lieutenant Colonel Michael L. Selves, United States Army, retired. Marion H. Serva. Commander Dan F. Shanower, United States Navy. Antoinette M. Sherman. Diane M. Simmons. And her husband, George W. Simmons. Donald D. Simmons. Cheryl D. Simcock. Chief Greg H. Smallwood, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Gary F. Smith, United States Army, retired. Mary Ray Sopper. Robert Spiesman. Patricia J. Stotts. Edna L. Stevens. Norma Lang Sterling. Sergeant Major Larry L. Strickland, 
United States Army. Hilda E. Taylor. Lieutenant Colonel Kip P. Taylor, United States Army. Leonard E. Taylor. Sandra C. Taylor. Sandra D. Teague. Lieutenant Carl W. Teepee, United States Army, retired. Sergeant Tamara C. Thurman, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Otis V. Tolbert, United States Navy. Staff Sergeant Willie Q. Troy, United States Army, retired. Lieutenant Commander Ronald J. Falk, United States Navy Reserve. <coughs> Lieutenant Colonel Karen J. Wagner, United States Army. <coughs> Meta L. Fuller. <coughs> Specialist Chin Sun Pack Wells, United States Army. <coughs> Staff Sergeant Maudlin A. White, United States Army. Sandra L. White. Ernest M. Wilshire. Lieutenant Commander David L. Williams, United States Navy. Major Dwayne Williams, United States Army. Chief Marvin Roger Woods, United States Navy, retired. Captain John D. Yamnicki, Sr., United States Navy, retired. Vicki Yancey. Petty Officer, 2nd Class, Kevin W. Yoakum, United States Navy. Chief Donald M. Young, United States Navy. Edmund G. Young, Jr., Lisa L. Young. Shu In Young. And her husband, Yu Guang Jing. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem performed by Staff Sergeant Adam Struby and the invocation delivered by Deputy yes, Chief of Captain Chaplains, Captain. Chaplain Brigadier General William Green.
Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please bow with me on this important day in our nation's history. Almighty God, we gather in this sacred place to remember and reflect on a day unlike any other. Help us with this endeavor of remembering as we honor the men and women who died on September 11, 2001. May your spirit provide strength and comfort and peace to the family and friends of the fallen. We also pray for those lost in the ensuing conflicts to defend our freedoms during the years of war since that day. Father, continue to bring healing in the lives of family and friends, especially as we remember the principles their loved ones embraced sacrifice, liberty, justice, honor, and duty. May we be compelled and convicted to take hold of these same enduring qualities. With this endeavor, we ask for your grace and strength. Now bless our national, civilian, and military leaders with wisdom as they lead our great nation through prosperous and challenging times. And thank you for our great nation and the freedoms we enjoy as Americans. Continue to protect our servicemen and women and civilians who are deployed in defense of freedom. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley. Mr. Secretary, distinguished guests, and especially the survivors and families of the fallen watching from across the nation, thank you for participating in this morning's ceremony. Nineteen years ago today began as a typical morning for Pentagon employees, and they commuted to work under a near cloudless sky with temperatures in the low 60s, and it promised to be a beautiful day. Here in this building, military members and defense civilians exercised at the athletic center and sipped their morning coffee and prepared for routine meetings in the day's work. And all that changed at 9.37 a.m. In seconds, scores of lives were lost. 184 men, women, and children were murdered in a violent impact and fiery blast. The innocent range in age from 3 to 71 years. Those who perished here, along with almost 3,000 more in New York City and in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, they were killed for what they believed in and for what they represented. But their memory and their legacy will live on as we honor and remember them all today. The horrific acts of terrorism on that day were meant to disrupt our way of life and destroy the idea that is America. 
The idea is simple, yet very powerful. The idea that terrorists hate and fear. The idea that all of us, men and women, black and white, Asian or Indian, no matter what the color of our skin, no matter if we are Catholic or Protestant, Muslim or Jew, or if we choose not to believe at all, the idea that each and every one of us is created free and equal. The idea that we will rise and fall based on our merit, not because of our race, our religion, or anything other than our competence and our character. The idea of a free press, free speech, due process, the right to peacefully assemble and demonstrate and protest, the idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All of that is what our fallen believed in, and all of that is what they represented. All of the values and principles embedded in our Constitution and made real in our own daily lives were paid for in the blood of the fallen. Those ideas were and still are hated by our enemies, by fascists, Nazis, communists, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, authoritarians, dictators, and tyrants of all kinds. They hate those ideas. They hate those values. And on 9-1-1, on 9-11, they tried to destroy us. But their murderous intent was never realized. Instead of sowing division and strife, we gathered at the murder scenes in New York City and Pennsylvania and right here at the Pentagon. And we came together as a nation. In the chaos and fog of the attacks, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, civilians, first responders, all brave, all selfless, ran into the flames to help the injured and the wounded. In the smoke and the dust of the rubble, no one could discern another's physical attributes, nor were they concerned with each other's background. What mattered is they were helping one another. What mattered is they were Americans with complete unity of purpose. Now, almost two decades later, their legacy of service and sacrifice continues. Since 9-11, almost three million Americans have deployed overseas serving their country in the war against terrorism. And nearly 6,000 have laid down their lives on the altar of freedom for the principles that come under attack on that day. And today, we gather here to honor the fallen of 9-11, to remember and reflect and to reaffirm our resolve to support and defend the Constitution, the idea and reality that is America for which those brave souls gave the last full measure of devotion. So let us resolve, let us resolve here yet again today to never forget those who were murdered by the terrorists, never forget those who rushed to save lives and in the process gave their own, never forget sons and the daughters, the brothers, the sisters, the mothers, the fathers, who gave their tomorrows for our todays. Honor them. Honor them today and forever. And honor the cause they served. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to now introduce the 27th Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Mark Esper. Thank you, General Milley. Distinguished guests, senior leaders, and most importantly, the survivors and the friends and family who lost long loved ones on that solemn day 19 years ago. Thank you for joining us as we pay tribute to the nearly 3,000 innocent lives that were suddenly and violently taken from us at the World Trade Center in New York City at a quiet field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and here at the Pentagon. Much like this morning, on September 11, 2001, Americans were getting ready for what they, would, what they thought would be just another workday. No one could fathom that on that bright September morning, we would experience the worst terrorist attack in our nation's history a horrific crime carried out by evil fanatics who would brutally kill the innocent in the name of their distorted cause. It was a vicious assault directed not just at our people and our institutions, but also at our most sacred ideals, freedom, liberty, 
and the pursuit of happiness. Yet in their attempt to shake the very foundations of our republic, to destroy our way of life, they underestimated our strength, our resolve, and our unbreakable spirit. We came together as a nation on that fateful day and witnessed a tremendous outpouring of courage, compassion, and sacrifice amid the grief, the darkness, and the disarray. The stars and stripes, that great symbol of our great nation, would soon adorn homes and businesses all across America. We remember vividly the images of first responders and volunteers covered in soot and ash, running undaunted toward the smoke, the fire, the chaos, again and again to rescue the trapped and the injured. Here at the Pentagon, we honor and remember the numerous acts of heroism and personal courage that prevented the human toll from becoming much, much worse. In one account, intrepid Americans determined to save their colleagues rolled in pools of standing water to protect themselves from the intense fire and heat as they repeatedly rushed back into the burning rubble and smoldering ruins. Meanwhile, engineers, mechanics, and hundreds of others jumped into action, keeping this building operating, even as firefighters battled the raging inferno brought on by Flight 77's jet fuel. The resourcefulness and determination allowed the Pentagon to continue its vital role of directing the readiness and response of U.S. military forces worldwide without missing a beat. And maybe most importantly, these heroes demonstrated to the world, especially our enemies, the resilience of America's armed forces and of our people. Since 9-11, millions of Americans have stepped up to serve this great country, all swearing that solemn oath to support and defend the Constitution, and with many paying the ultimate price to ensure that such an attack never happens again. That remains our standard to this day. Whether denying safe haven to terrorists in Afghanistan and Iraq, defeating the physical caliphate of ISIS, preventing violent extremists from gaining a foothold on the African continent, or bringing to justice terrorist leaders wherever they hide, the United States military continues to defend our homeland, our people, and our way of life. And so today, we also recognize those who've answered our nation's call. And we honor the legacy of our brave service members who have laid down their lives to secure the blessings of this great nation. Because of their selfless service, sacrifice, and unshakable commitment to our Constitution, America stands stronger, safer, and more secure. To the friends and families of those who have perished, no words can ever soothe your grief. No act will ever replace your loss. No remembrance will ever fill that void. But please, please know that the men and women of the Department of Defense will always be with you as we give our sacred pledge that your loved ones will not have died in vain so long as we stand watch over this great nation. It is in that spirit that we commemorate today and every 9-11 that follows to reflect on the blessings of this great country, to renew our commitment to the principles that have kept our homeland free, and to reaffirm our solemn vow as Americans that we will never forget the lives lost and tremendous sacrifices made on that fateful day and in the years that follow. May God bless you, and may God bless America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for a moment of silence to honor those killed at the Pentagon on United Airlines Flight 93 and in New York.
present arms. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's observance. Thank you for joining us this morning.